Google Pest Control Marketer Grow your business like never before Call 770-993-0004 Well, hello, this is Hal Coleman and welcome to another episode of Pest Control Marketing dot live. The only live streaming internet TV show totally dedicated to helping PCOs and WCOs grow your business, get more sales, close more deals, and make more trips to the bank. Also, and I'm here with uh, my mentor, my friend, my associate, uh, and uh, what all else could I say about you, Mike? Uh, <laughs> the guy that bothers you at supper time. <laughs> yeah. How are you today? I'm doing great. You know, and of course, uh, this is a live stream TV show, but we also take the audio and it becomes our podcast. We know we have a lot. So we don't forget about you podcast listeners, but we do invite you that if there are visual things you want to see, a little bit of housekeeping, go to pestcontrolmarketing.live and you can see what we talk about. Because what we do is, is we do this live stream and then we take the audio and that becomes our podcast. Uh, which a lot of people just listen to in the car on their phones or while they're exercising and, and so forth. So uh, it is not. And, and of course the place that you can uh, check out the podcast is Apple, Alexa, Amazon, uh, Google, Spotify, you know, where podcasts are, we're there, uh, we're in YouTube. And of course, in our, if you're not a member of the Facebook group, you know, be sure to be a member of the pest control marketing gold Facebook group. It's a private group where nothing but PCOs are in there and, uh, and they are trading ideas and uh, inspiring one another to, uh, to improve their businesses. So I know you got to improve your business subject you wanted to talk about today. I've always got stuff to talk about, but you know, we, we teach our clients how to do podcasts and it's, it's just a regular thing now when we're on a, when I'm on a coaching call with one of my clients and I said, well, how did it go this week? And he said, Oh, I got somebody called and, and, uh, I sold them a big termite treatment or a pest control service. And uh, they said they, they listened to my podcast. And so, you know, that's uh, kind of goes along with, with what I want to talk about today, Mike, which is uh, how to get free advertising and free publicity for your pest control business. You know, uh, I'm, I'm big on operating on a shoestring and, and always liked doing a lot of crazy things when I had my pest control business to get free press, so to speak. As a matter of fact, uh, I went to the Dan Kennedy uh, Super Conference, International Super Conference at the Opryland Hotel probably 15, 16, maybe 17 years ago. And uh, I bought... I paid about 700 and something dollars, I think, for a program to teach me how to get free publicity for my pest control business. And, you know, it came with a, you know, hey, if you try this stuff and it doesn't work for you, send it back and get, a, get your money back. So it came with a no risk uh, guarantee. But gee whiz, I got my money out of that 10 times over, to say the very least, because I learned. Uh, how to do a lot of things to get free publicity. Now, uh, you know, you if you've ever done any television or radio advertising, you know that it is expensive, uh, depending on which station you get on. But uh, especially here in Atlanta, where we are, uh, if you wanted to buy an ad on WSB Radio in Atlanta, you 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 better have a big checkbook if you want to buy one minute of their time. Uh, but what if you could get a minute or two or five minutes of their time absolutely free? Uh, and that's what I, what I want to talk about today is uh, how to do that. So one way uh, is to uh, provide them information that they are excited about sharing with their audience. In other words, something that uh, a public service announcement uh what what I I'll give you a, a prime example of what I a specific example. Uh, we were getting a lot of rodent calls uh, here in my town, and you know I, I did a little research at that time on rodents nationwide. I went to the Fulton County, which is the county that Atlanta is in, uh, 
I went to the Fulton County Health Department, talked to them about rodent problems uh, in the city, and you know came to determine that as as urban expanse has uh, occurred, it, it has created uh, an increase in rodent problems in cities and neighborhoods. You know, the more restaurants you have, the more dumpsters you have, the more dumpsters you have, the more rodents you have, the more backyard hobby gardens and bird feeders you have, uh, the more rodents you have. And, and I'm talking specifically roof rats here. Uh, we began seeing roof rats in places that, you you know, homes and brand new neighborhoods. And it wouldn't be long until they would begin having roof rat problems because they were close right behind a little strip mall or strip shopping center with restaurants and grocery stores. So anyway, bottom line, that rodent calls were and, and are now, right now, because they always are increasing in urban areas and neighborhoods, because as the population gets more dense, the rodent populations uh, have more opportunities uh, to to be at our table and be in our homes. So I uh, I did a little, drew up a little press release thing and, and actually took it down to the uh, uh, WSB radio in Atlanta and, and uh, gave it to a news guy that I knew. Uh, and I said, I, I just want you to read this because that rodents are increasing here in Atlanta. And he was like, no kidding. Yeah. He said, uh, you want to go on the radio right now and, and talk about this? And I'm like, uh, yeah. So he recorded me. He interviewed me right there on the spot. He's come on in here in the studio. And uh, I was on the six o'clock news that night uh, on WSB radio talking about uh, the rodent problem uh, increasing in Fulton County and in Atlanta. Now, uh, if I had tried to pay for that kind of advertising, mm, you know, it would have cost me thousands of dollars. Uh, uh, for the amount of time I got on the air, uh, but it was all free. I also wrote articles uh, for a local newspaper. I called uh, a little column, which I called My Pest Advice, and I would write an article about, uh, in other words, uh, termite season is approaching, and here are five things that homeowners need to know about termites and things they can do. Now, if you go to the to the local radio or TV or newspaper, uh, just and, and they think you're just there to sell, and that's what you want to do. It's like, you know, if you see termites, call me. Uh, they, they don't go for that, really. They, they're like, buy advertising if that's what you want to do. But if it's public service and you're not trying to guide people directly to you, see, indirectly, when they hear you on the radio or TV or they read an article that you wrote in the uh, newspaper you automatically become not an expert but now you're the authority you're the authority on the subject and that's what you want to be uh you know jerry garcia with grateful dead once said you don't want to be one of anything you want to be the one uh so becoming an authority is what happens to you when people hear you in the media like that so uh and I've had clients before. I said, look, go to the local newspaper. You're doing a big bat job next week. Go to the newspaper and tell them you got something really interesting that there's a colony of bats that are living in somebody's home. And you're going to go out there and show people how to deal with it. And this is something that every homeowner needs to know in case bats show up in your home. Uh, and they went out there with cameras and, and recorded the thing. And there he was on the six o'clock news. And, uh, so uh, thinking of creative ways to get free exposure in your community and free advertising, and that, that comes back to doing videos, Mike. You know, like we teach people to do videos, do a podcast. You put it out there. You don't pay anything to put that out there on the Internet. That's, that's the TV and radio that you get free right there. So... Uh, expand on some of this stuff. I know you got a lot of things I've never thought about too. Well, you know, what you're talking about is um, 
essentially content marketing, which is something that that especially since the internet has come along has really exploded because the entry level to do content marketing was real restrictive prior to the internet. And, uh, you know, because the, the media distribution networks were things like radio and television, especially on a local level and then print, uh, whether it be local magazines or local newspapers. And so if you were going there with just, like you said, with a blatant advertising, they're going to go, Hey, you're just, you know, if you want to, advertising in our um, media, then you need to pay for it. But if you can put a twist on it and get to the decision maker of any of these media outlets, uh, newspaper, you know, and they, they still exist. Newspapers, in fact, uh, give you an example. Um, I didn't know it, but uh, here in Nashville, there is a uh, magazine that only uh, wealthy people subscribe to. And uh, I'm having breakfast with him on Wednesday morning. He's the publisher of this magazine. I'm making friends with this guy because you never know with that kind of relationship what kind of story he would go, you know what, we need to do a feature on that. You know? So so step one is is when it comes to the offline world of free advertising, you got to find out who the decision makers are and you got to present something that, that becomes like, oh, that would make an, a fascinating interesting story. Um, you know, I want to advertise my pest control business. Now, now if you do, you, you pay us. That's how we make money. But, uh, you know, there's a bat problem. There's a, there's a rat problem. I remember, and you, you even left this out, but I remember years ago, uh, you told about an escaped, uh, what was it? Boa constrictor. <laughs> oh yeah. I, uh, well, I was doing a comedy bit with this character that I do uh, on the radio and TV, Milton Crabapple. And uh, I was doing, I was a guest on an outdoor show, uh, O'Neill Outside, and we were going to film a comedy episode. Uh, and I came up with this idea that uh, uh, we would put a snake under this house and then go into a big snake. So, uh, I was kind of in the little reptile business on the side and the guy that worked for me was in it in a big way. So I said, we need a big snake. So a few days later, he's got a, a 16 and a half foot Burmese Python. that weighed about 160 pounds. And I said, this will work. So I put it under my, with her permission, uh, my cousin owned a little ha a little cabin up in Alpharetta. It had a crawl space. Uh, and I had put poly polyethylene under it several years before. So I said, can I put this snake under your crawl space and then do this TV thing? And she said, yeah. So uh, I called the uh, news station and WSB and Atlanta Journal Constitution. Now, this was kind of prior to, you know, the Internet activity, really. This has been 25 years ago, I guess. And uh, I, I called and I said, I'm going under a house in Alpharetta to pull a giant snake out from under there. This thing's almost 20 feet long. And I thought y'all might like to come out here and watch me do it. So bang, they show up and uh, I, uh, we go under there and get this snake out from under there. We named the snake Fluffy and uh brought it out into the yard and the the uh lady from the journal constitution you know was making her notes and talking to me she and and then she asked the question that of course we knew it was going she said how do you suppose it got under there and i said well i put it under there <laughs> she said you put it under there why would you do that i said well but have you ever heard of a big giant snake being found under a house before she said oh yeah i've heard of it and i said well i wanted y'all to be able to see what people have to go through to get one out from under the house uh and she she said oh that's pretty cool and so she she wrote it so i got basically a full page in the leisure section of the the uh, atlanta journal constitution now if i had a uh call down there and said, I want to take out a full page ad in the journal constitution. Uh, there, you know, I'd have had to mortgage the house to take out a full page ad, but I got a big picture of me and it, and, it, and in the near, in the article, she said, 
uh, Coleman admits this was really a publicity stunt for his local pest control business. And, and so it was all, uh, nothing was hidden from anybody. Yeah. And, and another time, Mike, uh, I went over to Lowe's and uh, this has been, you know, maybe 25, 30 years ago. I went over to Lowe's and said, you know, I'm an entomologist. I have a, 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 all of these, as you can see a, a, on my wall back there, I got a lot of mounted insects, but I've got boxes and boxes of them packed away from uh, when I had my pest control business. And I said, we want to, I'd like to come out here and set up displays out in the parking lot and, and show people how to protect their homes from bugs and termites and things. And, you know, uh, if be a free thing, but I think it would, would attract the crowd. So he's like, he was all over it. He said, yeah, I'll, I'll set up a tent for you out there and put tables up for you and everything. He was just all over it. So we called it a pest fest and we ordered another snake. I said, get the biggest snake you can find. So, so incidentally, the other snake, we paid $300 for it. And we had a guy meet us at the house and we got through filming it. We sold it to him for $400. So I made a hundred bucks on the snake too. <laughs> I didn't want to pass up a sales opportunity there. So Mark finds this African rock python that's 20 feet long. And uh, it, uh, I don't know, it was out in Arkansas somewhere for reptile breeders. So he bought it, it weighed you know, at least 200 pounds. We didn't get a, an actual weight on it, but it was, you know, it was as big around as a telephone pole almost. And so we get that thing. We have to buy one of these huge trash cans with the wheels on it to get the snake in there to roll him. And, and uh, we had a, Mark had a big cage. We put him in there and I went to Kinko's and had a sign made that said, see the world's largest living snake. And we put that big sign up and, and for that entire day, everybody that went into Lowe's came over to our display out there and took a business card and some information. And I had, a, you know, a couple of people said, how do you know that's the biggest snake in the world? I said, well, if you can find a bigger one, I'll, I'll apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but so that yeah, there's no telling the value that you know we got from that long term. I had people for years after that say, God, I remember the big snake you had out at the Lowe's that day. So just coming up with creative ways to uh to get to get yourself in front of people and do something dramatic that they'll always remember. Well, but the, the two lessons here that I'm talking that I can tell you and and you know, we were given examples here of things that you did when you had your pest control agency is number one. You were with creative things that people had curiosity over. You were ex extremely, you, you know, if you'd had a sign out in front there at Lowe's that said, uh, you know, check out our pest control company. We we're the best bug guys in town. People would have just said, eh, you know, lemonade for 50 cents. That's what they'd have thought. Sure. But the sure. thought, see the world's largest snake. Yeah, you know, yeah. Daddy, I want to go see that. You know, that was curiosity. So the creativeness, and then two, um, building the relationships with somebody that will get you. You know, uh, what was Lowe's? Lowe's was like the newspaper or the or the TV station. That was where people were. It was it was a type of exposure. It was media, and and to translate that in, you know, let me tell you something. The online world is a lot easier than the things you did there. That took required some work. It required some creativity. It required some time. It required uh, some, you know, thinking outside of your uh, normal self. And the online world is, is all about creating interesting content. You know, it's what we try to do here with our podcast. That's why we tell all of our pest control uh, 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 clients and coaching clients that we work with that, you know, you there's only two ways to be found on the internet. There's paid advertising and there, and I don't want to say free advertising, but that's what content marketing is creating content that people find. And then that uh, when they, when they consume that content, which the easiest content to consume is audio and video uh, reading uh, on a cell phone. It could be a, a little challenging, but listening on a cell phone can be done in bright sunlight. Um, uh, yeah, watching I, I tell them, you know, there's two ways to get there. Uh, 
you can buy your way there or you can work your way there. Right. And, and, and so with Mr. Offline and Mr. Online here, uh, you, you talked about a wonder, you know, the offline way of, uh, earning your way to the top with free advertising still exists, but nowadays you've got the opportunity, um, uh, to do content marketing. And of course, one of the things that, that, uh, uh, I have at my website and I'm going to put my website up here and I'm going to say it real quick. It's uh websites, you control.com at the top websites, you control.com. I've got a, um, a link to Gary Vaynerchuk's content marketing model, which is uh, what we do uh, and teach. Um, hold on one second here. I'm going to type this website, you control.com. Um, and if you go there, you can, uh, you know, number one, you can learn about the content marketing model that we teach. But, you know, it's like I, I'll have clients say, you know, um, you know, well, why should I do a podcast? You know, well, that's an ugly word for creating content that gets found in the search engines and can build a relationship while you sleep. I mean, every day you tell me somebody contacts us because of this podcast. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the, the podcast that makes gives you credibility over your competition in home service industries like pest control roofing, heating and air, plumbing, electrical, uh, you know, there's nobody out there doing podcasts and uh, none of your competition is, I guarantee you, unless your competition is one of our clients. But when you get out there with a podcast, it does the same thing as being in the newspaper does. It gives you credibility. You're like, wow, these, this, these people have a podcast and that's just instant credibility. And what happens when, uh, and I'm back up just a little bit, when I was, uh, when I did a couple of things on the news like that, incidentally, the 20 foot biggest snake in the world, when I called uh, the news stations and told them that uh, we had the biggest snake in the world, guess what? They were out there with the cameras and we were on six o'clock news that mm -hmm. night talking about that big snake. But what happens is, guess what happens the next time a big, uh, pest or animal issue comes up in your community guess who they call they say oh yeah that guy that was on our show before he's you become their go-to person and i can okay. tell you more than once when i was in my office and i looked out the window and i saw the channel 2 or the channel 11 news truck pull into my parking lot and the guy got out one with a camera on his shoulder and one with a notepad and they're walking toward my front door and you talk about a heart flutter now in the pest control industry. When you see the news people pull up to your door, it's never good. Okay. But they, they would show up and I said, can I help you? And said, we're looking for Hal Coleman. I said, I'm Hal Coleman. He said, yeah, listen, we want to talk with you about mosquitoes and know if this wet spring that we're having and everything is going to have any impact on the mosquito populations. You know, and after I get over my shock and my heart rate slows down, I, I start talking to them about mosquitoes. And there I am on the six o'clock news again. So when I had my pest control business, I became sort of the go to guy with that uh, uh, station and network because they had used me before. They know if there's a bug issue, this is the authority. This is the guy we go to. So. You, it, it, it it grows into stuff, you see, if yeah. you can just do it one time. I, I guess the lesson for today is that you, if you want to get free advertising or free exposure, be creative and don't be scared to, to talk to people. Don't, don't, uh, you know, the fact that you were comfortable talking to the camera, the fact that you were ta uh, talking as an expert, that made all the difference. And that that's why it works online just as well as it does offline. So let's, let's talk about uh, content here. You have a book called How to Grow a Pest Control Business. And by the way, that's at howtogrowapestcontrolbusiness.com. And we want anybody and everybody that ever listens to this podcast, if you listen to this podcast or you watch this live stream or you watch us on YouTube, you know, one of the things Gary Vaynerchuk says is be everywhere. Well, we're, we, we, we believe you got to live by that. We live by that. We are everywhere. We're in Facebook. We're in YouTube. We're uh, in, in Apple. We're in Google. We're in Amazon. We're everywhere. And there is a I website. Know. 
Hmm? We're in iTunes, aren't we? Yeah, well, well, that's Apple. I have oh, okay. 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 But how to grow a pest control business.com is a book that Hal wrote with how, how many tips and strategies do you think are in that book to help people grow There's their business? About a hundred. Over a hundred right. strategies. And you know, we're not advertising, we're not selling anything. We're giving you a gift. And the reason we're giving you this gift is we want to prove to you that we are authorities on helping business. Well, we've got so many testimonials. If you go to uh, uh, pestcontrolmarketer.com or any of our websites and look at the testimonials, we know what we do, do does work. We, we're not trying to sell on anybody on that what we know how to do works. We're just trying to build a relationship with the people that don't know us, and we want to build that relationship to a no like trust. So go to that website and get Hal's book. And then, of course, one of the things I wanted to tell about um, starting now, this is August of 2021, and um, we have an up and coming uh, every year in February, we do the next level PCO marketing.com. So check out next level PCO marketing.com. Um, we have all of the previous years recorded and we're going to do it this year virtually. Uh, and so just check, check all of that out. And, and of course, how once you tell them about what you're willing to do, if they'll call your number of 770-993-0004 or email you at Hal or Hal Coleman, what have you got in store for folks to do that? Well, you know, I will give them an hour of my time, an hour session, and it won't just be a, a casual conversation. Uh, if you want to take me up on that, what I call the double your business strategy session, uh, I have a questionnaire that I will send you to fill out about your business and your marketing efforts and what you're doing, what you're not doing. Uh, so that, uh, when we have our hour together, I won't have to spend the hour just asking you all of these questions. I'll already have the answers to them and I will have made some notes and I guarantee you that I will have identified some low hanging fruit that you weren't aware of and some great opportunities for you to get some quick growth in your pest control business. Uh, we'll identify some roadblocks that may be holding you back from growing your business. Uh, and uh, we can talk about employ employee issues, but uh, you're going to get a ton of value out of the hour and it's not going to cost you anything except an hour of your time. And you're certainly not going to be pressured or kicked into buying anything. So uh, if, if you're, and listen, if you're just a curiosity seeker and you're hard headed and you already know everything there is to know anyway, uh, and you just want to find out more about what this is all about. I wish you wouldn't call because I'm busy. Mike's busy. And uh, we, we're, we're looking for people who really want help. But if you have a, a pest control business, especially one with 10 or less employees, and you seem to be stuck, maybe you were growing good a few years ago and things have slowed down and now you're not seeing that growth, or maybe, maybe you're seeing some single digit growth or, you know, 10 or 12%, but you really want to get up there. You'd like to dream of a business that grows 25 or 30% a year or more. Uh, and, and, but you don't know how to get there and, and you need some help. That's what we do. That's our ideal client is somebody who's stuck uh, or the wheels are turning a lot slower than you would like for them to and you just don't know how to get it cranked up. Uh, that's something that we can really help you with and uh, that you take what you learn from us and you carry it with you for the rest of your life. So there should be no reason for you to ever have a business that's stuck from the standpoint of selling and marketing. So call me, call Mike. Mike offers the same thing. And uh, when I talk to a client, if they have found me, and uh, they want to get set up their hour. I, you know, I always without fail saying you need to call Mike Stewart too. Talk about your online stuff because uh, he can get into the backside and see what you're doing there. And he knows he's Mister Online, so be sure to call him. And and they always do. They call you, and then they tell me they had a great conversation with you too. So if you want the help, folks, we're here to help you. If you don't, then that's okay too. Uh, so uh, we, we, we make ourselves available if you need us and you want us. Yeah, we, we, we put out our phone numbers. Mine's 770-826-3662. Uh, 
Um, you know, we know what we do works. Uh, everybody doesn't agree with us, but you know, that's okay. Uh, I just know that the people that do agree with us and that the people that have worked with us, uh, you know, like, uh, I, I won't name names because I don't want to embarrass them, but one fellow was doing a hundred thousand and he's going to break a half a million this year in less than 18 months. And he, you know, one of the things he said to me is his Mikey, you and Hal don't ever quit me. <laughs> So don't you want, don't you want to know, have a customer who says, please don't ever quit me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and so, so at the en end of the day, you know, uh, this is what we do. We give away content. And then the way we advertise is we let people know the truth of what we're doing. You know, I highly recommend uh, that you check out Hal's book. Uh, you check out our group coaching, pestcontrolmarketinggold.com. And just be uh, remember that we're going to become uh, having a, a live event. In fact, everybody that um, uh, joins Pest Control Marketing Gold is going to have a free ticket to the next level marketing PCO oh, event yeah. in February. So uh, I'm going to leave up here. You can go to uh, nextlevelpcomarketing.com and read testimonials there from a lot of the past attendees. Yeah, I think this will be the. Uh, I did it one year, Mike, before you. Uh, we became partners in it, but this will be our fourth year, our fifth year that we've done it together. Right. Uh, and and it just, you know, it gets better every year. And Well, things change. Uh, strategies change. Technologies change. Uh, the one thing that's constant is, uh, well, I'll tell you something that wasn't constant. I was going to say bugs are constant, but because of the pandemic, bugs were worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People had to stay home, uh, locked up in their house for uh, almost a year and they, uh, a lot of them discovered they had bugs. Yeah, yeah. They didn't know they had them. They'd been too busy going and coming. So, uh, yeah. well, and the, bu and the bugs and the vermin were hungry because the restaurants shut down. So they came to your house looking for something to eat. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. Earth well, I think we probably ought to get on out of here unless you got any final comments. No, I don't. I appreciate you folks. You know, we have most of our listeners hear this on the replay and, uh, but if we appreciate you watching and or listening, whichever you do, but uh, uh, don't hesitate to call us if we can help you in any way. And uh, we hope you have a great day until next time. Uh, this is Hal and Mr. Offline and Mike, Mr. Online saying thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hal Coleman has been active in the pest control industry for over 40 years, including owning and operating his own successful pest control business for 18 years. He now devotes his time to helping other PCOs and other WCOs double, triple, and even quadruple their businesses faster than they ever imagined. Be sure to check out his website, pestcontrolmarketer.com. For more information about Hal's coaching program, you can reach him at 770 nine nine three zero 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 four or email him how at halcoleman.com. Mike Stewart is known as the internet audio and video guy. Since the birth of the internet, Mike has been showing small business owners how to get more new customers, increase their sales and grow their businesses online using audio and video, now with iPhones and Android phones. For more information about Mike's coaching program and his online training courses, visit MikeStewartCoaching.com or email him Mike at InternetAudioGuide.com. Google Pest Control Marketer. Grow your business like never before. Call 770-993-0004.